Yo, what's going on? What is going on? I'm going to wait a couple seconds. Let some people uh, get on the live stream. Actually, I'll just wait till the alert goes out. Oh, man. So, I know it's been... It's been a couple of weeks since I've done a live, but um, definitely wanted to get back on here. You know, we have the challenge starting up relatively soon. And, um, you know, so I need to take some time off to get things uh, situated, get focused, and then get ready for this challenge to begin. Uh, so how's everybody doing? Do me a favor, as always, type five in the chat. Let me make sure um, you guys can hear me and see me just fine. Uh, go ahead and type five in the chat. So I came out here to the trail, you know, like uh, I have my Sunday morning rituals. And um, I came out here to, to the trail. We have a real dope trail over here in Orlando. Uh, and I ride my bike, you know, every Sunday morning, a couple miles. And I knew, I knew that it was going to rain. And, um, but I figured I can kind of get it in before, you know, it started pouring down. Yeah, I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. I mean, it was raining so bad at one point. I was like, am I in the middle of a hurricane? Because, I mean, the the rain was pouring down. I mean, the rain was coming horizontally. I was getting hit, like, from the side horizontally. I could see it coming from a side. Um, I couldn't see anything. Like, it, I had to squint my eyes like this. I could barely see anything. Um, soaking wet. But at the same time, uh, it was extremely fun. It was extremely fun. So I had to ride back uh, in pouring rain. Um, but it was dope. So I enjoyed it. I'm done. And um, <clears throat> before I get to the next portion of my day, I wanted to speak to you all about a couple of things. So uh, what's going on, everybody? Thank you. Thank you. What's going on? Latanya, what's going on? Sheila, Vincent, Iris, what's going on, everybody? Appreciate y'all typing five. Um, so for those who don't know, this is Edward Williams, uh, founder and creative health by any means necessary. Ellen, what's going on? Um, I wanted to get in here and talk to you all about a couple of things, uh, really one major thing. Uh, before I do that, let's do uh, a couple of housekeeping uh, things. So uh, our next challenge start um next week if you're going to sign up for the challenge then you need to sign up by next week before thursday because that's when we start the orientation uh that's when we start with the uh the onboarding process and that part is very uh critical because you need to understand what's going on before we start the challenge on may 3rd you know may 3rd we kick in the doors and we hit everything that's moving uh, may 3rd is not the day to try to figure out how to log on to the membership all right we use the orientation those four days before. So Thursday is when we start the orientation. Uh, we make sure everybody is uh, situated. We make sure everybody is acclimated to the uh, the system and how it works and how you need to sign in and how you do your uh, your daily accountability, uh, your check-ins. We make sure you know where to go for those four days. And then Monday, we kick in the doors, all right? So we can't have uh, soldiers out in the field on Monday trying to figure out how to use their weapons we can't have that. all right so we need you out there ready to go on monday um hope everybody's doing good like i said i know it's been a couple of weeks since i've been since, since, I, since i've done a live stream um but uh i've been doing some uh organizing and you know moving things around and still working of course always working and uh one of the things that <clears throat> had to go back and revisit I revisit a portion of it on a daily slash, you know, every other day basis. Um, but I have to always go back and revisit the business plan. You know, there's a lot of things, if not almost everything. There's a lot of things that I feel like in life um, that we would do ourselves a favor if we started with ourselves. And what I mean is when, when it comes to things outside of us, so the things that we see in society, things that we don't like in society, um, you know, whether this is from our, our legal system, our political system, our judici judicial system, um, you know, uh, anything really in society. I think we would do ourselves a great uh, favor by 
starting from the micro first before looking at the macro. Now, this doesn't mean that you have no input on the macro. You always have input on the macro. But while you're having input on the macro, and by the macro, I mean things that are outside of you, uh, things that may not be directly in your control, um, things like that you dislike in your 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 legal system, your medical system, your health system, um, your whatever system, things that you have an issue with. Of course, you continue to have a say on those things. You continue to work towards trying to improve it. But I think you're doing yourself a great disservice. And I think we are doing ourselves a great disservice when we don't keep that same energy with ourselves when it comes to the, the micro. And I'm using yourself as the micro because, of course, society is bigger than you. Um, if And I always bring things back down to anatomy. Um, if we were to look at this country as a body, then the humans, like each human would be like a cell in this body we call America. And so, yes, we can have demands and make demands and uh, contribute to those, you know, demands and those things that we want to see for that body. But you should always make sure that the individual, the cell, you are carrying out what you want to see in the macro on the micro. Um, And then that even gets even smaller, you know, for your for yourself, like as the body do you have cells? So let me just get to what I'm talking about. Many times when it comes to uh, health, and you all know I speak to people every single day, uh, Monday through Friday, um, as it pertains to patients. Um, you know, a decent amount of patients are my recurring patients that I'm seeing. Um, but then I also have a decent portion of those patients that I'm seeing on a daily basis that are brand new to me. And... There's a lot of uh, people who are who are not pleased with where they are at as, as it pertains to their health. And of course, we understand that. Right. But what exactly is it that these people may not be pleased with? And you can start with yourself. So if I was to ask you all, every single one of you on here on a scale of one to ten, how pleased are you uh, with your health? 10 being extremely happy, like 10 being like, I'm perfect. Like there's no room for improvement. I'm good. I don't want, I just want to manage where I'm at. And one being, bro, I'm one step away from just ending it all. And if you feel like that, I highly recommend uh, speaking with someone, getting therapy, getting help. Uh, But grade yourself, grade yourself. Where are you at as far as your health? Five. Yeah, you're right there in the middle. You feel average about it. Um, You need improvement. Um, You know that work needs to be done. Seven, you know, you're pretty good with it. You're working. Seven means you're like you're actually working on making a change. Uh, You have some some room for improvement, um, but you're you're active. You know, when you start going under five, really five and below means that you, you you are not happy. You're not pleased. And the lower the number goes away from five means that you're kind of going down like you're making decisions um, that are going to make your health worth worse overall this is very important that you grade yourself and i'm going to take it away from health and i'm going to step into business because uh, this is something i had to do and i have still have to continuously do with my own business Um, even outside of hbam with any business that uh, a business endeavor that i have or that i'm working on and this is what do you want? Like, what is the goal? What is the vision? I'm going to not, I'm going to not use HBAM, but let's use a business. Let's say like, um, I have a business where <clears throat> now nah, let's use HBAM It's easier. Um, let's say my vision is to radically improve the health of the black community by any means necessary, which is the one part of the vision for uh, health, health by any means necessary. I now that's a that's a huge vision, right? That's a huge mission. That's a huge goal. I now have to make that practical for myself, for the business. How are we going to make that happen? We have to now go through and identify the issues that make us have this vision. Diabetes rate, heart disease, uh, blood, high blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, uh, kidney failure, 
you know, looking at these rates and seeing the big issues that make up this lofty goal. What are the big issues? OK, now we see these issues. We see the, the rate that we're dying when it comes to uh, heart disease. We see the amount of amputations. We see the amount of uh, people on dialysis. Uh, we see the amount of people on medications. We see the obesity rates. Uh, we see these things. These are problems. Uh, these are problems that contribute to that lofty goal. How do we get how did we get to those problems? Like, how are those problems created? How are the issues created? Well, with these issues, we know a large portion of the issues come from our lifestyle. Very little of it is created by genetics, uh, by things that we just inherit. Um, when it comes to those uh, things such as the blood pressure, heart disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, obesity, we know a large amount of that is based on our lifestyle. And lifestyle meaning uh, the foods that we're eating, the things that we're consuming. Uh, lifestyle meaning uh, our activity or our lack of activity. And so now we see those things. Uh, also, we, we also understand that a part of the problem is, uh, you know, access to food, you know, fresh food, uh, food deserts. Um, also, we see that a problem leading to the lifestyle, because if we understand that the lifestyle makes up the majority of what's creating the blood pressure, uh, high blood pressure, the diabetes, uh, the renal failure, if we understand that the lifestyle is creating a large portion of that, well, what is contributing to that lifestyle? And so pretty much what you're doing is reverse engineering. What's creating the lifestyle? Well, let's keep it real. A lot of people are just making those decisions, even though they understand um, <clears throat> that the food and the lifestyle, the lack of movement is contributing to those unhealthy conditions. That's a portion of it. Uh, but then we also have people who, you know, they would like to eat better. They want to eat better, but unfortunately they may not have access. They may live in a food desert. Uh, they may uh, not have access to fresh foods, um, food desert. Uh, we also understand that a portion of that problem as well when it comes to lifestyle is the education. You may not um, be aware of what foods or types of foods to eat. You may not even really understand that uh, there's a difference between, um, you know, the processed foods and the actual whole foods. You may just be looking at it from a calorie standpoint, thinking that if I just eat this amount of calories, I should be able to lose weight. I should be able to get healthy, but it's not working out for you. And so education plays a large role in that as well. And um, and so we understand that the list goes on and on and on. But even under that, as far as what's conditioning you to make certain choices with the lifestyle, we now have to go even below that. <clears throat> and that is, what do you want? Like, what do you want? Because you have to understand that, once again, I like to bring the macro down to the micro and then build back up to the macro, you know, reverse engineering is what they call it. Um, you have to understand that you, whether you know it or not, are the leader of a kingdom. That kingdom, that body, that system, that, that nation is your, is this body you're walking around in, right? You are not your body. Your body is not you. You reside in your body you are the conscious individual who is having this thought you are the conscious individual who is looking at this video right now thinking thoughts and the way you can prove to yourself that you are not exactly your body is because right now you're breathing but you're not breathing consciously that is something that is being taken care of by your body that is something that's being taken care of by a system called the autonomic nervous system the autonomic nervous system runs without your permission even if you made the conscious decision to hold your breath, there's only so long that you can consciously do that. It's could because eventually you're going to pass out and then the autonomic nervous system is going to be like, wake this fool up. And it's going to continue to breathe while you're passed out. And you can try to do that over and over and over. And usually you'll get the same results. You will have to do something drastic like duct taping your face and your mouth and then your hands and then jumping into an ocean. And committed suicide like in order that's just how extreme you have to go 
in order for your body to not put things back into homeostasis. So you are not your body. You reside in your body. This body is your vessel. Um, it is my belief uh, that it has been gifted to you to do your work, which is your purpose. That's my belief. All right. <clears throat> so as the leader of this thing you call body, as this thing you call your, your kingdom, your nation, you can see yourself as the president of your body. Now, I did a video a couple months back when the whole election thing was kicking off and um, it really it wasn't really about politics, but it was. And my my point was, um, you know. The uh, the criticism that we had for whichever party, because I, I don't I don't care, like I honestly don't care your political stance, anything, all, all those things. I have very little interest um, in those things when it comes to people's opinions. Uh, but at the same time, what I wanted people to do or what I was want my, my goal in that video was to I wanted you to hold on to the criticism that you had for this presidential candidate or this president or whoever uh, the critique, uh, the criticism, um, the things that you had that you were pleased with or you were displeased with um, your the the system that you had for yourself to make a decision about who you were going to vote for or, or not vote for or just hold your vote. Take all of those reasons and then transfer that energy to the election that your body was having, which is you as a leader. Should you as a leader of your body be reelected for in order to continue to control your body? Um, and if so, why? If not, why? Would your cells, which would be the people in your body, would your cells be pleased with the leadership? Would your cells be pleased with the overall condition of its country, which would be your body? You see how we're breaking this thing down, uh, making it macro or making it micro and then use it, reflecting it back to the, the macro. And this is what I mean by I think we would do ourselves a lot of good if we started with ourself first before going out or if you're going to go out make sure you come back in to make sure that your room is clean that your house is clean that your whatever you have like whatever energy you have that you're you're uh you know you're, you're putting out there don't forget to put it on yourself because i would assume that you know you didn't vote for a certain president presidential candidate or whoever because you didn't feel like they would be a good leader. You didn't feel like they would do, uh, they, they would benefit you. You didn't feel like they would benefit your, your family, uh, your community. You, you felt like they would bring down the, the quality of your, your country, right? And those are good things. But what about for yourself? What about for yourself? Would you vote for you? Would yourselves vote for you as the leader? of the body if your cells were to take a look around at the conditions of your city which is your body uh your your so your city would be like your organ like or no your city would your, your state would be like your organs right it's so like your your liver would be a state uh your kidneys would be a state uh your your eyes you know like all these organs would be states actually uh, systems would be a state. So like your cardiovascular would be like a state. Uh, your endocrine system would be a state. Um, you know, like your digestive tract would be a state. And then your cities would be the organs. I don't know. I'm, I'm freestyling this whole thing. But nonetheless, when you look around your city, your liver, is it a healthy liver? Have we been truly appreciating the function of this liver? The liver does a lot of work throughout the body. And so when a lot of people you know, they talk about cities and the condition of the cities and how there's trash in the street and how uh, the roads are beat up and how uh, the, 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 the fog, uh, the pollution, the air pollution, um, you know, how there's the, the waste management system of that city. Uh, you have corrupt politicians. Uh, you know, you, people have a lot of complaints about certain cities. But now ask yourself, would your hepatocytes, your 
liver cells where they have a lot of complaints about the liver? Is there a lot of fat infiltration in the liver cells? Would the, uh, the cells in your kidneys have a lot of complaints about the conditions of the kidney? Would your heart cells have a lot of complaints about the conditions of the heart? And if they do have a lot of complaints, who's responsible for fixing the conditions? Because once again, when it comes to the city, the state, the country, we know who to blame. Like we know who to go to, like we know who we should, you know, vote in and vote out. And if we don't get that, we're very upset. Like we, we know who to go to. And we we place that demand and we make sure you're like, hey, you know, and we even make sure, you know, we have all this debates. I, I don't know if you all remember, but I really remember um, what it was like during the election for 2020. And. You saw family members getting into heated debates and arguments about who they were choosing or who they were not choosing or if they were choosing not to vote at all. I mean, heated debates. But we would be doing ourselves such a great service if we were to take that energy about things outside of us and about uh, things that we're displeased with outside of us and transferred it in us. And have that heated debate with ourselves. Last year, we weighed this much. This year, we have gained 25 more pounds. We can't continue like this. If we continue like this, X, Y, Z is going to happen. We need new leadership. We need to uh, we need to question our leadership. We need to demand more from our leadership. And so, one of the problems when you always go out there. To, to focus on things that you really, yes, you, you play a part, you play a role as far as making a decision, but you don't directly control the ultimate outcome. You don't directly control it. You can have influence on it, you can have a say, and you should continue to do those things. But the, at the end of the day, I feel that many of us, myself included, because I, be, trust me, before I get out here, I'm not on my Derek Jackson game, and I, and I know that's, you know, but that was such an extreme failure. Um, but I'm not going to get on here and talk to you all about something that I have not checked myself on for first because it's, it will be that that would be the definition of a house divided for me. If I'm getting out here talking to y'all about health and fasting and I'm constantly eating and I'm like constantly, you know, struggling, I'm overweight and I'm diabetic and I and I have problems myself. Then what the hell am I out here doing talking to y'all about health like and we have a lot of that going on. So when we have our issues with things outside of us, we would do ourselves a great favor, a great service. If we understand that, you know, there's only so much of that issue you can control. But when it comes to and you should even though this even though you have a limit on how much you control, I'm saying that you should still make the conscious decision to participate or not to participate. And regardless of which one you choose, make sure you have a reason for what you are doing or not doing. That's what I'm saying. But when it comes to you, you got to understand like, yo, you control that. Like we, you actually control whether or not you drink soda or juice or water. You control whether or not you eat every two to three hours or if you decide to fast. Uh, you control whether or not you stop eating at 6 p.m. You control whether or not you take a walk. Like as the president of this country, this body, or as the king or queen of that kingdom, of that nation, you have so many things that you are directly in control of. And so when you go out there and you throw this energy all at these things that you really don't have that much control over, and then you drop the ball, like you completely drop that responsibility and you completely drop that energy for accountability, uh, you completely drop that energy for checking an individual when it comes to yourself. And when it, you are doing yourself a great disservice, when you you leave that energy and you place it on other people. But when it comes to you, you're like you're delusional. Right. Been there, done that completely delusional. And. The reason why I talked about well, the reason why I, I titled this, uh, you know, your health business plan 
is because once again, <laughs> my my lovely cousin, who's also my business coach, um, she's dope. She's helped me out so much, and she's successful herself, of course. Like I don't I don't want to um, be getting coaching advice in a certain topic for someone who's not, you know, successful in that area themselves. And I remember when um, I started working with her and she was like, Eddie, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And so just shoot me over your business plan. I'm like, business what? (laughs) She was like, send me your business plan. And then after that, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. I'm like, um, why don't we go ahead and just do this and do that and do this? And she was like, okay, but send me your business plan. I'm like, come on, cuz. That's like, eh, I don't got no damn business plan. That's, that's white people shit. I don't got no business plan. I'm just going to make it happen. She's like, don't talk to me until you get a business plan. Click. That's it. Her level of BS when it came to the business plan was zero. I can show you how to make a business plan. I can show you what to read about making a business plan. I can make suggestions about this and this and this and business plan, but it is a requirement if you're going to work with me. It is a requirement if you're going to uh, have any connection with me. Like, don't go out here talking about you working with me, I'm helping you, this and this and that with no business plan because you're going to fail and that's not going to be added to my, um, to my you're not going to add to my L's. Like, you're not going to give me an L because you refuse to do basic stuff, which is a business plan. So I finally had to make a business plan, right? Oh, man. The idea of coming up with a business plan, like, because I don't, I don't like writing. I'm, I'm not a fan of, you know, the documentations and, you know, listing things down. But as I was doing it, it forces you into a very logical thought process. And that's where I do very well at, or I I do decent at, I would say, you know, Um, because it makes you ask questions. Well, what's the goal? Okay, that's a that's a big goal. Um, What are the problems? Okay, that's those are some big problems. Uh, What contribute to those problems? Like, well, how are those problems created? Okay, so we see that. What are you going to do to improve these problems so that you can get to your goal? And then it's like crickets. Well, if there's crickets when it comes to what are your action steps to eradicate this goal, I mean, to to achieve this goal, then you're going to get crickets as a result. If, because she would ask me questions about, you know, (laughs) what is your this? What is your that? What is your this? You know, like, what is your this? What is your that? I'm like, what are those things? Like, what do you mean? Like, Yo, cuz, just tell me how to get this money. Like, cuz, tell me just how to do this. Cuz, let's talk about the funnel. Cuz, let's talk about the Shopify. Cuz, and she's like, no, no. And like, she was like disgusted. She was like, no, no. Like, you don't even know where you're going. Like, you don't even have a vision set out. You don't even have a plan set out. And so when, you, when you're dealing with a, a business plan, the reason why it's so crucial is because that business plan is directly linked to the overall vision and the business plan is something that guides you it also dictates it it sets the standard you know so if this month you're going to uh, have this many people sign up to your email list okay cool your goal is to have let's just throw out some numbers uh, your goal is to get 100 people to your email list. All right, cool. Um, how are you going to make that happen? Um, so now you got to actually think logically on how to make that happen. What do you want to do to make that happen? Because if you believe that 100 people are just going to sign up to your, your, your email list just because you think you're cool or just because you think it's a good idea, in reality, in the real world, that's not going to happen. And when the, when the end of the month comes, you will not meet your goal. And that will continue to happen month after month until a whole entire year has passed by and you have not met your goal. Why did you not meet your goal? 
because you had no real strategy. You had no real action plan to make it happen. And so if your goal is to have 100 people sign up to your email list, how are you going to do that? You need to answer that question. Okay, I'm going to uh, have 100 people sign up to my email list by having something for free, having an offer. Okay, what is that going to be? It's going to be a PDF download, a book, uh, a discount. It's going to be something, right? And so you make these things tangible. Okay, how do we bridge the gap between the goal of 100 leads and getting people to actually get to the, the actual uh, PDF to download, whatever you have for free? Somebody needs to get out there and communicate the message. Well, how are you going to communicate the message? By video. Okay, who's going to make the video? You. What is the video going to be about? It's going to be about this. And then what are you going to do? I'm going to tie it into the lead. And then what are you going to do? I'm going to ask people to sign up for that. All right, cool. How many people do you think you will get to sign up to that? Well, I think that one video will get me at least 10. All right, 10. Well, your goal is 100. What else do you need to do? Well, I need to make more videos. Okay, so let's set a schedule. How many videos are you going to make per week? Five videos. If you make five videos per week, or let's say your goal is, you know, 100 per month. So you know that there's four weeks and the, uh, you know that there's four weeks in a month, right? If you made one video each week, that's 10 people each week. That's a total of 40. Well, that's not going to do. If you do two videos per week, that's 20 people signing up times four. Now we got 80. Well, you're still 20 short. All right. Let's just do three and call it, call it light work. Now <laughs> we have to actually get out there and make three videos per week. Well, what are the videos going to be about? Well, the videos need to always be tied into our overall mission, overall goal. You can't be getting out there talking about health one day and then the next day you're talking about um, cars because you're, you're, it doesn't align. You're giving mixed signals. People don't know who you are and what you're doing. And so that's getting down into the nuts and bolts, being very logical about that. By doing those things, you set this plan about what's going to happen and this plan is directly tied into your overall goal great plan great goal but now guess what when that alarm clock goes off in the morning or however you get up you have to get to work and so the business plan like for myself i have a big business plan like overall and then you have a yearly business plan then you have a monthly business plan and then the monthly business plan is broken down into the uh, the weeklies and the dailies. Right. And so this is something that I have to visit every day or I'll keep it real. Like um, I don't visit every day because I kind of know what to do for the week. Um, but every other day or every three days, you know, if I just need to make sure. But once I do that logical part. As far as the business goes, it's now hands off. The, the document becomes the, the one that's kind of like calling the shots. All right, today's Tuesday. We need a video from you. The video needs to be about X, Y, Z. You already made a logical decision last week that this is what it's going to be. Let's go ahead and make that video. It take, take away the emotions, take away, you know, you don't feel like it. And if you don't feel like it and if you don't do it, guess what I have to tell myself? All right, cool. Your three videos per week is now cut down to do two videos. And when you don't meet your goal, you have to be OK with that. Right. Because I can't get in there and be like, yo, I only got 50 leads this month. All right. Let's go back and look at the work. What kind of work did you do? Did you make three videos per week? No. Actually, I made one video per week. Actually, I did a little bit less than one video per week. All right, so what are you crying about? What are you crying about? Like you didn't do the work, you don't get the results. And so, once again, that's micro, right? Like that's what up with ourselves because when we thrust outside of us and we talk about our uh, things that we're displeased with and we have issues with and everything like that, it's really easy to hold other people accountable. It's, it's very easy. And once again, I'm saying that you should continue to do that. 
but you are doing yourself a great service when you don't have that accountability for yourself when you don't have that same energy that you have for people outside of you you don't you lack that energy for yourself and that's what i struggled with for a long time when it came to business and i mean and you know what that's going to make you do is it's going to make you very frustrated it's going to drain you it's going to do so many it's going to have such so many negative effects on your psyche and your overall quality of life because Especially if the, the vision or the goal is a part of your overall purpose. So you can retire from a job. You can't retire from your purpose. Trust me, I tried retiring from my purpose. Apparently, I, and I say apparently because um, I'm not a health guy. Like, I, I mean, I never pictured myself as a health or medical guy at all. Ever before in my life until I started doing this stuff. Um. There was no indicators at all in my life that I would end up in health. None. And when that thing hit me and I started doing the work, it was something that kept me up at night. It was nights. It was something that made me get up early in the mornings. It was something that made me read and just be very aggressive about going through certain things. It was something that made me get on camera. Like, this is not comfortable. I mean, all right, I'm used to it now, but this is not me. This is why I need to step back and take breaks from uh, social media because truly this is not me. Like I'm not that guy. You know, I, w I'm, I was always uh, self-conscious about my, my speech and my, you know, the way I pronounce words and X, Y, Z. So like naturally it's not me. But at the same time, logically, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter. You know this. This is your vision. This is your purpose. How you feel, your emotions are irrelevant. Get out there and do the work. And if you try to retire from me, this is the purpose talking. If you try retiring from me, I'm going to make you so uncomfortable on a daily basis. I'm going to irritate the shit out of you on a minute by minute basis. I try stepping away from this health thing. I try. <laughs> it don't work. It don't work. I don't even have a choice. Like, I don't even have a... And that's what I realized. I don't know. I mean... Some of y'all uh, remember the time where I stepped away for like months. Man, that was me trying to leave. I tried to leave this whole health thing. This whole HBAM thing. Yo, I was frustrated. I was done. I was fed up. Uh, so many things. Like just so many things. And I was completely done. Man, I don't even know how to articulate what I felt. But like, try to imagine something pulling at your spirit. Some, try to imagine something pulling at your, your soul. Let's try to imagine like something just irritating and pulling and twisting on you on a like spiritual level. Like try to imagine that whatever that you think that feels like, that's what it was like. I completely cut off everything dealing with HBAM and health. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to I'm going to do this business. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you know, go. Nope. Couldn't happen. It wouldn't wouldn't let me do it. And so there is no retiring from your purpose, right? Like, so forget about it. If, if you have something that um, you have already identified that you're here to do, let me save you some time. When you get tired and burned out, take a break, right? Take a break. But trying to like retire from it, quit and give it up, it's not going to happen. It's not, it's going to irritate the crap out of you. Um, so anyways, business plan. What is your health plan, Right. What is your plan for your health? Once again, whether you realize it or you don't realize it, you are the leader of your body. You are the king, the queen of your kingdom. Uh, you are the president of your nation. Like you, you, it's you. You are the one. And as the leader, what is your vision for your overall health. What does it say? A people without vision. Where there is no vision. The people perish. Y'all help me out. You know you know the. Uh, Y'all know the quote. But if you don't have a overall vision. For your health. For, for you in general really. Then. You can't be. Or you, you can. You can be upset about where you're at with your health. You can be upset. But it doesn't make sense, right? Logically, it doesn't make sense because 
you never set a vision. You never created a, a destination for your health. It's like me being in this SUV right now and me driving 13 hours. And at the end of the 13th hour, me being extremely upset because I'm not where I wanted to be. Well, where, where the hell did you want to go? Like, did you put the, the, the coordinates in the GPS? Did you even look at the map? Like, where were you trying to go? If you don't know where you're trying to go, it doesn't make sense to be frustrated about driving around for 13 hours and not being at your destination. You are where you are because of the lack of decisions, actually, or the overall decisions about not making a decision. And so this is where we have to now take accountability. Once again, one of the, the best things that ever happened to me was my, my uh, supervisor in the military, my, my tech sergeant in the military, who pulled my card and told me about just how extremely emotional I was, which I hated every single second of him calling me emotional. Like I was, I wanted to fight him, which only verified that I was emotional. Um, but by this guy telling me that I was extremely emotional and irresponsible and I lacked accountability and I blamed everything, I blamed all of the decisions I was making on other people. Like I was blaming my legal issues on other people. I was blaming, um, you know, certain reasons why I was in a lot of trouble in the military. I was blaming it on other people. I was saying, you know, only reason I did this is because this happened. Well, I had to do this because they did this. So it was always, my response was always because of what someone else did. And I was not taking any accountability at all. And when he banged into my head that you are responsible for everything that happens to you, good or bad. Just take accountability. He's like, even if you truly don't feel like it is your fault, just take it. And that was one of the best things that um, someone's told me. Like, it, it definitely ranks in the top 10 of uh, advice, recommendations that someone's given me. Because holding on to that, believing that, and living by that, it makes you take extreme accountability. And it puts you in the driver's seat. It, it, so it puts you in the driver's seat of your life, which is where I recommend we all be. Because if you're not in the driver's seat of your life, then where the hell are you at in this vehicle? You're in the passenger seat, you're in the back seat, are you in the trunk? And you got other people driving, you got other people speeding, running off the road, swerving through traffic, running the red lights. When you lack the accountability for yourself, and you are not holding yourself to the same standards that you hold others to, you are doing yourself the greatest disservice. Because trust me, when you get to that destination, you're not going to be happy with the destination. But at the same time, it won't even make sense. And that time that was, uh, that time that passed by driving nowhere you can't get that back. So <clears throat> I'm saying all that to say this. You have to have a vision or I recommend that you have a vision for you. I recommend that you have a vision for yourself in all aspects, all areas of life. Right. Finance, health, uh, relationship, uh, spirituality, um, education, like all areas I recommend that you grab your own life by the neck and control it. And you control it by having a vision. Now, once again, it's not enough just to have that vision. You have to actually go through that, that vision and turn it into a health business, business plan. All right. This is the vision. How are we going to get there? How are we going to get there? And you also need to figure out why that's your vision, right? Because that's going to be your why. Like, why do I want to be healthy? Why do I want to, you know, uh, not be diabetic or take blood pressure medications? Why do I not want to go through uh, the painful process of amputation? Uh, why do I, like, you got to have an actual why for that vision. That vision, you know, 
There's, it's not enough just to have the vision. The, the anchor, the umbilical cord, the connection to that vision is your why. It needs to truly connect to your you in order for you to walk with conviction. You can't walk with conviction and manifest that vision if you don't have the if you don't have any kind of connection to it. You know, so it's cool, like you can want to be a millionaire, but if you don't have a, a real reason for why you want to be a millionaire or why your vision is to be a millionaire, then when things get tough, which it will, it, it always will, you'll just drop off. Like you'll just stop. It'll be easy for you to quit. It'll be easy for you to come and go. It'll be easy for you to be here one day and not. It'll be easy for you just to hit the, the snooze button on a long clock. It'll be easy just to like, ah, I quit. I give up. I'm scoring to something else. You have no staying power because you have no connection to the vision. And so have the vision for your health. Have the vision for your finances. Have the vision for, you know, all these different areas. But also answer that why. Like, why is this so important to you? Why? Why are you doing this? Why are you willing to sacrifice everything to get to that vision? And once you understand that why, it, it takes away so many, it, it takes away so many, so, so many emotions, like emotional decisions that you would make if you didn't have that why. Because you now have to say to yourself, once again, bringing it back to the, uh, the example of uh, 100 leads and three videos, every time you fall short, of making a decision or every time you fall short of taking action uh, action that you identified that would get you this result all you have to do is make that action every time you fall short you now have to say i gotta eat that i'm going to fall short and i know why i'm going to fall short and i have to just eat that and have to be okay with that it won't make any logical sense to be like Oh, why am I not getting my goal? Oh, why did this not happen? You, you, you know why. You didn't do the work. You didn't do the work. How do you, why, there's no reason for you to expect the results. So it's important to understand that, that why, because that why gives you conviction. And also the, uh, when, you, when you quote unquote fall short, it's easier to deal with that falling short because you take away the emotions. You say, all right, that day I just had a bad day. Um, I didn't take the action that I was supposed to take. I now understand I need to look at what happened. So I didn't take the action because I had a death in the family. I didn't take the action because um, I didn't get enough sleep. And the reason why I didn't get enough sleep is because I was arguing with my partner. I didn't get I didn't take that action because um, whatever the reason was. OK, what can we do next time we are in a situation like that? Well, we need to understand that when situations like this happens, I'm more vulnerable to make bad decisions decisions i'm more vulnerable to uh staying up late night i'm more vulnerable to waking up later than i should you have to be able to look at it analyze it and then make plans for it going forward in the future and that only happens when you have conviction and you have conviction because of the why because this will take a lot of the emotional responses out and the more emotional you are the more likely you are to be uh, illogical, like the more the more likely you are to be delusional, the more likely you are to look at your, your situation and like blame it on someone or something outside of you. Right. So get that conviction, have that why connected to the vision. Now. The plan. So when it comes to your health. All right. If you say your 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 goal so you can't, you can't, let's say your goal is to lose 50 pounds, right? You can't wake up in the morning and manually do anything that's going to actually lose that weight, right? You, you can't, unless you're going to do some kind of drastic surgery first thing in the morning, you're not going to wake up in the morning and just cut off the 50 pounds. It's not going to happen. And so what you're doing, what you're working on or what you are the actions you are taking are actually uh, is actually what they call compound effect, which is a really good book that I recommend people read. Uh, the compound effect, I think, is 
written by uh, Dan Hardy, I think is his name. Uh, but the comp compound effect just talks about how little small actions on a daily basis equals up to massive results. Don't wake up in the morning and try to lose 50 pounds. It's not going to happen. That's a, that's a horrible strategy. It's a horrible plan, right? That big goal needs to be broken down into monthly goals. That monthly goal needs to be broken down into weekly goals. And that weekly goal needs to be broken down into daily goals. And then the daily goals need to be broken down into different sections of your day. If you know that in order to meet your yearly goal of losing 50 pounds, you have uh, set the, the, the plan to lose a certain amount every single month. And in order to lose that every single month, you have to lose something every single week. And every single week, you know, you don't go through and look at how much, how much you're going to lose per day. But in order to do that, you decided that working out is going to be a very smart action to take. Um, you also decided that fasting is going to be a very strategic, smart action that to take to actually get to your goal, right? Well, how does working out fit in your day? Because if you just wake up or if you, if the day prior you said, all right, I got to work out tomorrow, you go to sleep, you wake up and the whole day goes, the whole entire day goes by and nighttime comes and you're like, <clears throat> you're looking at your, your, your goals for the day, which was working out and you're like, I didn't work out today. Well, what happened? Well, I had to work. Okay. But didn't you know that going into this? Didn't you know you had a job before you decided you want to work out? I did. So then what the hell happened? I just couldn't find the time. So why did you make the goal? Like, why did you say that this is going to be, why did you make an unrealistic uh, action step? So your daily actions need to be real, realistic. If you say that you're going to work out for the day, you need to look at that whole entire 24 hours and find a realistic period in that 24 hours that you are actually going to work out. If you know that, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you got to get the kids ready. Uh, you got to, you know, pack lunch and all this like that. You know that it's unrealistic for you to work out in the morning. OK, then morning time is not going to be a realistic time to work out. Don't set a goal of working out in the morning if you know that that's not going to happen. If during the evening. When you're at work. You know you're not going to be working out. All right. So we don't set that. We don't we don't set that. What else do we have to work with? Mm. Well, on the way home, I can get a quick 30 minutes in. I can get an hour in. All right. Cool. Then this is the time frame that we have to make sure that we work out. So instead of, um, you know, leaving the office and going home to try to catch a show or trying to, you know, do whatever like that. We now have decided that we're going to get 30 minutes of working out in X, Y, Z. And so you got to go through your day and you got to look throughout your day and decide what time throughout this day am I able going, am I going to be able to work out and be realistic about it. If you find that there's no point throughout the day that you can uh, actually get into the gym or whatever like that, then you now have to modify it. Because if you know that working out is going to be something that's going to help you out, Modify your workout. Maybe you don't need a whole full entire gym workout. Maybe you need to start walking. All right, cool. How many times can you walk throughout the day? How many steps do you want to take throughout the day? How many times can you go up the stairs and down the stairs at the office you work at? How many chair squats or air squats can you do throughout the day? How many push-ups can you do throughout the day? If you say that this is your goal, you got to understand the creativity to get to that goal only comes when you have the conviction. The conviction comes with the why. If you don't identify with your why, you won't identify with the goal. Therefore, don't skip the step, step about um, having a why to create your conviction. Because once you identify that why and it created that conviction, you're going to find out that you're going to become creative as hell when it comes to meeting your goal. 
you're going to be saying things like, all right, I don't have a gym membership. I have absolutely no time whatsoever to work out in the morning. When I get off from work, I got to go pick up the kids and I got to be there by a certain time. And when I get home, I got things I got to do. I got X, Y, Z. All right. So what you going to do? Well, now you have to get creative. Well, I am able to take 10 minute breaks throughout the day. I am able to do have a lunch break. I am able to like. So now. OK, so now we see we have little breaks. What can we do in those little breaks? Well, what I can do is make sure I walk around the building twice while I'm at work. Um, I can also go upstairs. You know, I can also take the stairs, um, you know, around the office building three times in 10 minutes. That's a good workout. Um, I can also make sure I park at a distance from the office to make me walk into the office. Um, you, you now start figuring out certain things. Like I, I can also do 10 pushups um, every hour. I can also start doing uh, wall pushups or air squats. Like you got to now start fitting those things in and make that your daily goal. All right. So I don't have a gym. I'm not able to go work out, but I am able to do 100 air squats every single day. I am able to do uh, jumping jacks. I am able to do body weight things. And so you make that a part of your day. And you do that with all your goals. If you understand that drinking juice and soda increases the weight, increases the insulin resistance, and that is going against your goal, then it would be a smart decision not to do it, right? I don't even recommend going half and half on the whole juice and soda thing because just cut it out. Just just cut the juice and soda out. It, it does it does you no good. I don't care what I don't care how much vitamin C or zinc or calcium. I don't I don't care what the things are saying. It does you no good. Fatty liver is not a joke. All right. Fatty liver is not a joke. Insulin resistance is not a joke. And that soda, that juice, you know, I don't care how healthy it is, they say it is. It's going to add to that. It's going to contribute to that. Um, so <clears throat> drink water. What do you need to do to give yourself the best chance of assuring yourself that you're going to drink water throughout the day? Carry a water bottle. Carry some kind of water jug. Like carry, like keep water around you. That and keep it on, keep it so where you can see it, right? And so what you're doing is you're going through planning out your day. You already, we already. So too many times when we we make a goal. This is why it's so important that you have a health business plan the same way you got to have a business plan, business plan. Because if you're just focusing on that 50 pounds every single day, like every single day, you're like, all right, I got to lose 50 pounds. I got to lose 50 pounds. You're, you're, you're trying to like hit a home run every single day. That's not going to happen. That is delusional. That is you being delusional. What is going to get you to your goal is small, consistent actions every single day. Exercising every single day. Drinking water only every single day. Cutting off your eating at 6 p.m. every single day. And you make these things non-negotiable. Also, you learn how to adapt when things happen. Once again, if you quote unquote fall short, don't just fall short and keep it moving. Fall short, keep it moving, but analyze what happened when you quote unquote fell short. All right. So I didn't. I'm not supposed to be drinking juice, but today I drank juice. Why? What happened? Like, don't don't do none of this emotional wagging finger or getting on yourself. Oh, my goodness. I can't be do that. Nah, 10 hunt soldier. Get back out. What happened? Let's analyze what just happened. What just happened? You drank soda. You drank juice. All right, cool. Get your emotions out of the way. Why did you do it? Well, I did it because I was incredibly stressed out. I was anxious. Um, you know, this just happened. X, Y, Z. OK, blah, blah, blah. All right. What are the chances of that event happening again? I don't really know. It can definitely happen again because I didn't control it the first time and I won't control it the next time. You're 1000 percent correct. An outside event happened that you really didn't have any control over the outside event, but you control the inside event 1000 percent. So how can we alter your response the next time something like this happens? Well, the next time something like this happens, I will understand that I'm likely 
to reach for a soda or a juice or something sweet to kind of calm my nerves. And instead of doing that, I will make sure that I do this. So you set up contingency plans, like you set up plans the way you would do it in the business. If a client told you, yo, we're going to sign up and you're expecting to get that that $10,000 check from this client and that $10,000 check is going to help pay this, pay that, pay this. If you are going into that next month and you have no contingency, contingency plans about in the case that this does not happen the way you planned out, you're going to fail. You could possibly go out of business because you have to understand that if it's outside of you, you don't control it. Somebody can tell you that they're going to write you a $10,000 check all they want. But when it comes to the actual writing, they control that. When it comes to making the actual decisions, they control that. And unless you have some kind of magical power where you can like touch their head and make them make the decision to do that, you don't control them. But you do control you. You do control how you're going to respond if that check doesn't come through. The check doesn't come through. All right. We don't have much time to be emotional about the lack of this check coming through. We need to be very strategic about how we're going to now move from here. Well, thankfully, because I understood that this was a possibility, I had a contingency plan set up. So now we now execute plan B. We now execute plan C. You got to be the same way with your health. Because you understand that Whatever event made you reach for the chips, the soda, the juice, the, the, the crackers, the cookies, whatever that event was, you couldn't control that event. Maybe your, your, your boss started spazzing out and y'all got into, like, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but whatever that outside event was, it could very well happen again. You don't so much worry about controlling that outside event, but you damn sure have to control how you respond to that event. If you're likely to make decisions in that time frame that is not going to be in favor of your overall goal, make that known and then make a commitment that if this happens, instead of me reaching for the drink and the juice, I know that I have that tendency. I'm going to get up and walk outside. I'm going to get up and take a break. I'm going to get up, uh, walk outside, take a break, sit in my car and read my goals. I'm going to get up. Some people go grab the Bible. Some people go and meditate. Some... Whatever that is, you now have to find out what I need to do in the event that it happens to get me out of the emotional realm and get me more into the logical realm. What helps calm me? Whatever that is, you got to figure it out for yourself and you set that up as a contingency plan for yourself in the event that that happens. And so you now have to take your health like it's your own personal business because guess what? It is. It is. We all know that it's hard to accomplish things if you are struggling with your health. And, and the, the bigger the goal is, the, the, the more uh, focus and energy that's required to achieve that goal, uh, the harder or the, the, the heavier the impact is of the health not being where it needs to be. And so we have to start thrusting that that vision, that idea, that reality, the things that we want to see, we got to start thrusting that out there for ourselves. Once again, it's very easy to hold other people accountable and wag fingers and say that, well, they should have did this when that happened and they should have did this and this and this and that. All right, cool. You keep that energy. But when it comes to you, make sure you keep that energy as well, too. If you know that juice and soda creates fatty liver and you're already insulin resistant and you already have fatty liver, what do you think more juice and soda is going to do? You cannot be upset with the results. Take your health serious. Look at it as if it's a business because it is your business. If you truly have this vision and you truly have every intentions on getting there, you got to sit down and you got to come up with a living document. A living document is something that uh, it evolves. It evolves as you evolve and you grow because if you stay on path and your goal is to lose 50 pounds, you're going to eventually get there. But don't just, you can't just like the, the country, you can't just have a goal that you pass, you, you meet the goal 
and now you have no vision for the country or you have no vision for the kingdom. You have now nah, you have to always continue to evolve like you have to always continue to to level up, to go up, to progress. So it's a living document because as you start to achieve this goal, you start to make these uh, these take these action steps. You're going to start knocking these things off and crossing them off. And when you cross one off, another one needs to be up, be, be there. And you're going to find yourself getting becoming more confident and more capable of accomplishing goals because this just has just become a habit for you. Like this has just become a way of life for you. And that's what you want. But it all starts from checking yourself. You have to check yourself. We all do. I got to check myself. I don't want to say a thousand times a day, but multiple times a day. I check myself. I mean, if I do, if I don't do anything, I definitely check myself multiple times a day because when I have an opinion or I have a thought or something, you know, outside of me about something. It's like I have developed a habit where it was like, well, shit, do you do that with yourself? Like, is the body equivalent on point for you? Whatever you just critiqued, whatever you just saw. Whatever you are saying to yourself that this person's stupid, this person's an idiot, that's dumb, that don't make any sense. All right, cool. But what about you? Like, you are you in check? I'm not saying that you, you, you don't have to go around being perfect. I don't say that. I'm not saying that. But we have to start holding ourselves to a certain standard and being accountable to ourselves uh, the same way we have that energy for other people and for other things outside of us. I hope that makes sense. Um, I have no idea how long I've been talking. I know I have a lot of comments, um, but I hope you all get the overall gist of it. I'm in, I'm in this SUV sweating right now. I hope you all get the overall message, which is if you don't have a vision or a plan for yourself, you, you, you're going to be nowhere. You're going to get nowhere. Your destination is going to get your outcomes are going to be nowhere. Like you're going to be in the middle of nowhere and that's going to create a lot of frustration. And it's OK if that has been your experience. But once you have identified that this is going on. You got to put on your big boy pants, your big girl pants. You got to get realistic. You have to get real with yourself and you now have to make this conscious decision today. I don't like this. I don't want this. This is not where I want to be. This is not what I what I want. Oh, well, thanks for telling us. That's that's what your body is saying. That's what your cells are saying. Well, thanks for letting us know that you don't like this because we did. We had no idea based on your actions that you don't like this. Didn't like this. What do you like? What do you want? You got to actually set, set time aside by yourself out in nature and have a conversation with yourself to figure out what are we doing? What are we doing with this whole thing? Call health and my body and my life. Like what what are we doing? Are we happy with this? That's why that's why grading yourself is important. Like, are we happy with this? Do we want improvement? I I, I rate myself a five, but where do I want to be by the end of this year? Am I cool with just being a five at the end of the year? Or do I want to be a six at the end of the year? I want to be I want to feel a seven at the end of the year. Um, my 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 weight. Am I cool with this? Do I want to lose weight? What am I doing about it? Diabetes. Am I cool with this? Am I cool with the, the medications, the insulin? What am I going to do about it? You have to call yourself out. Because if you don't call yourself out, there will be no improvement. And if you don't call yourself out, there will be no leadership coming from you. And you are the actual one that's residing in your body. What and who is going to lead you is going to be outside of you. It is going to be the healthcare system, which is a freaking horrible leader. Like, I don't want to go on a tangent, but obviously a lot has happened in this past year, right? And you have all of these so-called people and professionals 
that just care about you so much and that is, is so set on convincing you that we love you and we care about you so much we want the best for you so much please go out and get this vaccination once again my conversation has never been about the vaccination itself it has been about the overall the, the foundations the ideas that go along with it oh you want the vaccination because of what Oh, you don't want to get COVID. Why not? Oh, you don't want to die. Okay, that's interesting. Is it that you don't want to die in general or you don't want to die from COVID? Is it that you're cool with dying from a heart disease? Are you cool from dying from diabetes? You cool from dying from kidney disease? Like you're cool with dying from those things, but just not COVID? Which one is it? Because if your overall premise is that you don't want to die early from anything, then we got some work to do and a vaccine is not going to accomplish that goal. These people are convincing so many people that just get the vaccine. You'll be straight on that side. But diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, obesity, the list goes on and on and on. We have nothing to say about that stuff. We ain't got nothing to say about it. Even though we know that the chances of you being more neg negatively affected by the virus while having those conditions is more serious. Even though we know that if you have those conditions and you encounter this virus, you have a lesser chance of a, bet of a good outcome. So, one has to always ask the question, is you slick or is you stupid? And when I ask that question, I'm never talking to you all. I'm talking about the system, the healthcare system now. Like, you know, well, just now the whole entire country, the ideology of this whole vaccine thing. Why such aggressive energy with getting this new injection and then soon as that energy is done with the injection it disperses it goes to complete zero when it comes to water when it comes to processed food when it comes to exercise these folks are completely silent when it comes to the foundational things about being healthy this is how you know you are being played this is how you know you are being hustled because if you truly care about the people, the country, one, the obesity rate wouldn't be nowhere where it is now. Uh, two, your diabetes, your heart disease, those rates. How in the hell are you the richest country and you spend the most on health care in the world and have the most sickest people and the most medicated people? Once again, are you slick or are you stupid? These folks are not stupid by any stretch of the, imagine, of the imaginations, but they're incredibly <laughs> slick. And so what we see right now is a level of finesse. I mean, kudos on the, the art of finesse that we are seeing right now. Like these folks are elite with it, elite, because they have now convinced millions of people that it makes sense to get the vaccination and go drink a big gulp. To get the vaccination and light up their cigarette. To get the vaccination and sit their ass on the couch and watch whatever reality show. To get the vaccination and go get your free donuts from Krispy Kreme. They have conditioned millions of people to believe that that makes sense. Nothing about any of that makes sense. I could have more respect if the energy that was being put behind the vaccine was also being put behind the foundational healthy things that we have seen for thousands of years work. There's no questioning about water. There's no, there's no questioning about the benefits of water. You need water. It would do the country a great 
service if these people also talked about the benefit of drinking water and the disadvantages and the risks that you're putting yourself in when you're drinking Coke, Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Sprite, Kool-Aid, juice, XYZ. But they will never do that. Why? It's called the FDA. You figure out what FDA means. You figure out why food and drugs have an administration together. And then you also figure out why the people who are promoting the drugs are not telling you about the dangers of the foods. And then you also realize that the same panel that will approve the food also approves the, 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 the drugs. And you really think from a logical standpoint that these folks are going to mess up their money. They are not here for you. They don't care about you. They don't love you. I can only say that so many times until you just look at the facts and realize that this is true. This is where self-respect comes into play. Uh, this is where your purpose comes into play as well because you have to understand that if you don't identify that you have a purpose in general, and this is my belief, okay? So in my belief, in my world, if you don't identify that you have a purpose, I, don't, I have no idea what your purpose is. Um, and you may not even have an idea of what your purpose is, but what I would say is that you do yourself a great uh, service when you even just identify that you are here for a purpose. Like you are here, when you just identify that, all right, I have something here that I need to do. That will carry you a long way into finding your actual purpose. I would say that's step one. Because if you don't even go with the step one, if you don't have a purpose, you will now become a part of someone else's purpose. And if my purpose is billions vaccinated, I need you. I need you to get in here, do your thing, and I also need you to spread the gospel of the vaccination. All right? I need you to be aggressive about it. I need you to be very judgmental about it. And that's the other thing right there. You know, so I was just talking about the election and just how uh, heated the debates were when it came to who people were voting for or not voting for or just not voting at all. Very, very much heated. Uh, people became political scientists overnight. Uh, extremely judgmental and had all the smoke in the world for people outside of them. And once again, that is fine because as a citizen of this country, that is something that you have the rights to. My problem was, is that I was saying that we should keep that same energy for ourselves because whether you know it or not, you are leading your body. You are leading your health. You are the leader of your health and your body. And you would do yourself a great service if you would keep that same energy, right? Well, with the vaccine talk, man, <sighs> extreme delusion. Extreme delusion. Not even just with the vaccine, but even just the overall virus in general. Uh, even just the, the conversation about, you know, mask and distance and all these things. You have people who are super aggressive about other people wearing masks. And okay, cool, I get it. But y'all hold on real quick. Let me... uh all right i'm back so yes um yeah with the with the whole vaccine thing um and mask and just you know this overall this overall year you know just how this whole thing <clears throat> has played out and just the outrage when it comes to 
things such as the mask and the vaccine and just being compliant with a lot of these things, um, I, I scratch my head and I question the lack of energy and accountability for taking the next steps. You know, there's a video on my, uh, my page, which, you know, that video took off. Um, and it's, it's talking about, you know, once you get that vaccine, will you take the next step or was it all cap? I watched that video. Just take a look at that video because that's when I was uh, fresh out of a conversation with several individuals who had no intentions. And I mean, that was like, how, how long ago? Did, I think I did that video like a month ago. Well, people have no intentions on taking the next step, which should have been the first step. And that is doing the basics, the, taking care of the basics of health for your body. Water. Water. Drinking water is not a good idea. It is a law. Your body needs water. Planet Earth, 70% water. The human body, 70% water. Your cells, 70%. Water is not a good idea, it is a law. And if you don't abide by the law, when you quote unquote break laws, they will break you. And so when I see people and hear people being so aggressive about something such as a mask or the vaccine, cool, you, you have every right to feel that way. But do you truly believe what you are saying and what you're promoting? If you refuse to drink water, if you refuse to stop drinking the soda, if you, if you understand that drinking a can of Coke or Pepsi, pick it, whatever soda, if you understand that this will decrease your immune system for up to four hours, that's not just fluff. That's not just something that I feel is the truth. Uh, these are facts. The more sugar you consume, the lower you're going to decrease the function of your immune system. It's not a, a, a it's not an idea or a suggestion or just something I'm making up. Uh, this is these are facts. Sugar consumption, in the form of juice, soda, food in general, will decrease the functioning of your immune system. Depending on how much you're looking at, at least four hours of decreasing what you call your white blood cells. Decreasing what they call the phagocytes. You're going to decrease. This is not just something I'm saying. You have people out there who are in the medical field, who are in the science field, who know these things to be a fact. But yet, this is not something being pushed out or spoken about as far as really trying to keep people healthy. Because if you would think that we want to keep people healthy, then all right, cool, all hands on deck. While y'all out there talking that vaccine talk, make sure you talk about the fundamentals of health. Water, exercise, whole foods, shit, eat an apple. I mean, put down the donuts, the Twinkies, the juice, the sodas. No, that's a conflict of interest because, once again, FDA, they know what they're doing. Slick or stupid, they are not stupid. They know what they're doing. And so when I see people being super aggressive about ideas that are really not their own, because if it was their own, if they are truly, I'm, I'm wearing the mask because I'm trying to stay healthy, and you're drinking the soda because of what? Got to get the vaccine because I don't want to get sick, and you're still smoking because of what? You see the, the cognitive dissonance? You, you all the way over here on what they said you should be doing. But with the things that you know has been proven for thousands of years, like this vaccine is not even a year old. This whole event is barely a year old. All right, it's a year old now, but the vaccine itself is not a year old. But you're being super aggressive about something you know nothing about. We have documents, research, articles about the benefits of water. And you still choose to drink soda juice and all this other crap. You still choose to smoke and then put your mask back on. You still choose to run out 
and get a Krispy Kreme donut after you got your vaccine vaccine card. So how honest are you really being with yourself if you are falling into that line of thinking? All right, completely went on a tangent. That has nothing to do with a business plan. Actually, it does. Because once again, if you don't have a plan for yourself, other people got plans for you. You will become a part of their plan. But when you have a plan for yourself, you can now make this decision to do it or not to do it and get back to your plan. If you choose to get it, all right, cool. I got it because I made this logical decision for myself. Once again, you are the leader. You are the president of your body. You are the king. You are the queen. You, you, you the one. So when you make this decision to get the vaccine or don't get it, you need to make that decision as a leader of your body. It is your body. If something happens or does not happen, guess what? I don't feel it. Your doctor don't feel it. Nobody, nobody feels it. You. You are the one that's going to feel it. You are the one that's going to have to sit in that by yourself. Right? And so it stands the reason that if you have to now sit in that by yourself and that this is your body, this is something, this is the vessel that you uh, have been gifted, in my belief, uh, to use to carry out your purpose, well, you need to make a decision. Is, does the pros outweigh the cons for you when it comes to getting it or don't, not getting it? Once you make that decision, get back to work. Don't get so distracted about this, the, the conversations that are taking place. You got work to do. You got work to do, and the work to do is on your health business plan. You can't do the work that you have set out for yourself if you're constantly being distracted with all these conversations about nothing. People will, people will make you, have you sit around, not make you, they will entice you to sit around and babble with them about things they really don't know anything about, no one really knows anything about, and you're just babbling, 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 and time is wasting, wasting, wasting. And guess what? I guarantee you're not getting that time back. You're not getting it back. And so by the time you look, a whole six months has gone by, and your overall vision and goal for your health has been completely abandoned because you got off path, you got off purpose, because someone else came in and say, hey, this is what you should be doing. Let me lead you. No, no, you are supposed to be the leader. And as the leader, you have to make calculated decisions, you have to make calculated moves for you. This is important, this is not important, I'll get to this later. I got to work out. I can't be sitting around at the bar with you 3 p.m. I got, I got something to do. I got to drink water. Yeah, I know you brought in soda because the, par the office is having a party, but that goes against my goal. My goal is more important than drinking juice because it's your, 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 part, your, your birthday. Happy birthday. I'm glad you made it another year. Congratulations. We can toast, but I got water in here. Oh, come on, drink juice. And after a while, you just have to, uh, you got to start, you got you to gotta hold on and protect this vision that you have and this, this goal that you have uh, like it's a child, like it's your child. Because after a while, when you see people constantly uh, inviting you to do things that you already told them, was not a part of your plan, not a part of your vision, things that you are not doing, at some point, you got to see this as an attack and you have to see them as an intruder. You have to see, you have to at some point see them as uh, a threat and you have to make the appropriate decision with threats. Get them out of your life, push them away. There's certain things you do with threats. You know what to do with a threat. Now, don't neutralize them like physically physically uh, but at some point you got to get these threats away from you because if you allow the threats to keep on advancing closer and closer to you you know they're gonna overrun your castle soon you will have no castle you'll be in the same position that they're in because usually that's what threats are trying to do they're trying to get you where they're at 
They're trying to bring you down with them. So um, what is your health business plan? Please, y'all, get serious about your health. If, if you're unhappy with it, um, if you have a problem with it, you, don't, you need to come up with a health business plan. Once again, we talked about the overall vision. Uh, then we talked about the yearly goals. Then we talked about the monthly goals, the weekly goals, and the daily goals. And then we talk about the daily actions. The daily actions are building up to that daily goal. The daily goal is building up to that weekly goal. The weekly goal is building up to that monthly goal. The monthly goal is building up to the yearly goal. The yearly goal is building up to the overall vision. So, if you don't have a vision for your health, your life, your you can't get upset when you don't get the results that you want because you never identified the results that you want. Therefore, what results you get is going to be a reflection of who's leading you. And if you're not leading yourself, then guess what? That system is leading you. And the system is going to lead you right to where they want you to be, which is usually sick, medicated, and dependent. That's what they're doing. They're leading you to a position to be sick, medicated, and dependent on them, and confused. That is good money for them. That's good money for them. You, you're confused. You have no idea what's going on. We'll help you out. We got this medication. Uh, this medication seems like it's making me gain weight. Oh, no. Let's get you this surgery. The surgery uh, seems like it didn't really work well because now I'm gaining the weight back even with that happening. And... I'm back on more medications. Sorry to hear that. Let's do this procedure. And it, and it keeps going on and on and on and on and on. And you are being a follower of a system that has no intentions on truly seeing you enjoy your life and your health. I mean, you don't have to believe it. But results speak. So um, come up with a, a vision. Create a health business plan. Get serious about it. Come up with monthly goals. Come up with weekly goals. Come up with daily goals. And then come up with actions every single day. Once again, it's not about you waking up and trying to hit a home run. That's delusional. It's not going to happen. You're not going to wake up and do the push-up that makes you lose 50 pounds. And that's another thing. Um... There's a quote about miracle seekers. Um, and I did a video about miracle seeker, seekers where a miracle is something that should not happen based on nature. Like it's not a natural outcome. It's a supernatural outcome. It's something that is almost like the exact opposite of what should happen. And so if you know that you spent 10, 15 years of unhealthy habits. Okay, that is what it is. But if you are expecting in one day, one week, one month, one year to completely turn that around, to, to completely uh, lose all that weight, you're expecting a miracle. You're expecting a miracle. And That's a very uh, delusional way of going through life, in my opinion. And so that's why the, the, the plan, the, the, the health business plan, helps you to get very logical. Because if you understand that this is what you want, you understand that there's an action that's required. This action that's required, if you do it, then you, you're working towards achieving the goal. If you don't do it, then you can't expect to get to the goal. So it puts you in a very black or white, you know, A, B type thing. All right, y'all. Um, I hope that helped y'all Hope that helped y'all out. Um, hope you understood, you know, what I was saying. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Um, but uh, just, just uh, get to work.
get the work, get the planning, you know, go sit somewhere by yourself, go into nature, you know, just be by yourself and figure these things out. All right. It's a process. Um, yes, it can be tedious because you have to deal with yourself. And a lot of us are so used to being distracted by a thousand things going on that it can be extremely uncomfortable to sit by ourselves and deal with ourselves. But it's one of the best things you can do. Sit with yourself, deal with yourself. And then <laughs> you got to you got to bring together that house. Right. You, you know, the saying a house divided cannot stand. Well, if you are you're 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 unhealthy and you want to get healthy. Well, the house is divided. The reality is one is over here and your desire is over here. They're separated. They're divided. Um, your desire is right here, but your actions are right here, making you go in the opposite direction of where you want to go. It's divided. You, 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 it's not together. And so if that house is divided, you, you're not going to stand. You're not going to get to your goal. You have to get that house together. Right. And so once the house gets together by you being by yourself and getting everybody else out of your business, imagine you being very displeased with the way your household is operating. You don't like what your, what your spouse is doing, your kids are doing something completely different you're like i don't even know you like where'd you even learn to do that at well if you got all these different influences coming into your house and you have no filters whatsoever you have no windows you have no doors you don't have a roof you got youtube coming in you got uh tiktok coming in you got the the friend from church coming in you got the the, the friend from the office influencing your spouse you got all these different influences coming in and you're like Yo, like this is not where I want us to be. I, I don't like what I'm seeing. Your house is divided. Your house is divided. And you're never going to get your house together until you cut off all those different things coming in. Put some doors on your house. Put some windows on your house. Put screen on your house. Uh, put a canopy over your roof. Like you have to stop those things from coming in. That is you taking yourself and putting yourself in the woods somewhere. Go sit out in the park. Be around just nature. Turn your, turn your phone off, turn everything off, get away from everyone. Go sit with yourself. Make yourself sit in the woods for four hours and just be by yourself. For a lot of people, that thought alone seems very, very uncomfortable. But trust me, you're not going to become united when you got all these different uh, influences coming in and you don't even know what you truly want. The reason why you don't know what you truly want is because you're getting all these suggestions and ideas coming from all these different places and it's unfiltered. It's unfiltered. So sit with yourself, go somewhere by yourself, just be there for about four hours. And then when you return, don't just jump online. Don't just jump on Facebook, Instagram and start taking in all uh, of this influence again. Continue to keep them cut it off, cut off. All right, y'all. I got to go. All right. So um, I know there's a lot of comments. Um, I'm going to come back through and read them. Um, make sure everybody understands that uh, next week is the last week to sign up for the challenge. Uh, the Fast Life 20 Day Challenge, if you want to sign up. Orientation starts on Thursday. Uh, then we close the doors on Saturday, Sunday. And then we kick in the doors on Monday. All right. So if you want to be a part of that, click the link. Make sure you sign up. For those of you who are a part of the the, uh, the challenge, I look forward to seeing you all uh, through the orientation and putting in this work. All right. So thank y'all. Share the video and I'm going to at y'all later. All right. And always remember our community, our responsibility. We have what it takes. Let's get it. Peace.